Hello, welcome to Daryl's Beekeeping Videos. I'm Daryl, I'm a master beekeeper, and this evening's lesson is how to install foundation into a wired frame. So the uh, reason you want to do this is you can either buy uh, wired foundation, which has these um, vertical wire supports. You can get them with or without hooks. And again, you probably can't see it from that far away, but there's these small hooks as part of the wire that go out about 90 degree angle or so, and those goes at the top at the top of the uh, frame in this little slot that's pulled out when you use a wedge top frame. Uh, you can either use wired foundation or you can use unwired foundation as its name uh, implies. There's no metal support wires in this. Usually whenever I use unwired foundation I use this with um, fishing line horizontal supports but for tonight's lesson I can I'll show you that it actually can be done with metal wire as well uh, it's not a big deal you can do either technique so when you first get the foundation it's going to come in and again if you buy especially if you buy in bulk I typically buy mine by the uh, I guess a 25 pound package if I remember right there's typically about a hundred and some pieces of, of foundation in there and they'll come with these uh, wax paper separators so you simply pull these off and you can use these for fuel or whatever you want smoker fuel or whatever you want again I order stack if you make your own foundations I've got a, a foundation press so I can make my own foundation if I wanted to um, so again you're going to need your foundation you're going to need your frame either a Super. Some people use the mediums for broods chambers and uh, honey supers. Same thing with the deeps. They're used for brood chambers or honey supers. Your choice. Uh, if again, my personal technique is if I'm using it for a honey super, I'll use metal horizontal cross support wires. And if I'm using it for a brood chamber, I generally use fishing lines. So that way, if I have to cut a queen cell out, I, I, it is much easier to cut fishing line instead of using a pair of uh, diagonal wire pliers to cut the metal um, again if I'm going to cut out a single queen cell next thing you're going to need because I am using metal wire hor uh, horizontal wire is you're going to want it to use a spur embedder um, when they try to sell you spur embedders they're going to try to sit, sell you this one that looks like an old spur that's on the side of an old on the back of an old cowboy boots these are I found these to be cumbersome and not very effective whereas if you can get one of these that has a smaller head it stays in my experience it stayed on the wire much easier and then the next thing you'll need is you're gonna need one of these little um, form boards when you're to hold the, the frame and the wire uh, close to each other all right so the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna actually insert the foundation into the frame again because I've already removed the wedge I want to pay attention to where that wedge is and I'm gonna flip it upside down and the reason I say that is because when you, you see this, where I've taken this wedge out, it creates kind of a little uh, rabbit uh, joint. So I want to pay attention to that, uh, especially if I have foundation that has this hooks on it. I want to make sure that those hooks are facing toward me away from that rabbit back shoulder. So the way I do this is I simply put the frame upright, and then I'm going to go over and under each one of these horizontal wires, in this case, it's a, this is a medium frame, so I only got to go toward me, go through it, and then come back through it. So over, under, over, under, until you get it in there. Again, it's easier to bypass that first wire and slip it through instead of going through this narrow gap. Uh, so again, I'm going to simply place it down. You can also put it down horizontally initially until you get it started, but I like to quickly get it vertical so that I can get my... Uh, gravity going with me. So in this case, I bypassed that first wire. And I'm simply using my fingers to manipulate it as it gets past that uh, bottom horizontal, in the case of a deep frame, that second horizontal wire. I just simply take my fingers and kind of manipulate it in until it gets past those wires. In this case, I've only got the two wires to deal with. And then what I like to do is I simply like, once I get toward the, the foundation toward the bottom, I like to start on one end and kind of tuck it in, especially these little wires. They're going to stick on you a little bit um, as they catch the wood. So I like to simply get one corner in and then I work my way back across the foundation as I'm putting it into the, wet, into the groove 
of my bottom portion of my frame. Now if you happen to have one of the older style of frames that have a slot, some of the older ones have where they've taken the saw blade and it's just going up through the wood and it leads the corners with a small piece of wood in it. Um, so what you may have to do, if that's the case, you may have to take and just cut out a small square out of the corners of the foundation just to get it past that portion where the blade didn't go all the way up through. Now the newer frames that you can get on the market now have been uh, done with a router so it, it's a clean slot all the way through. It's a, a continuous slot instead of having just a little bit of wood where the saw blade had gone up and left just a little bit of the wood. Uh, in this case, uh, one of my, my favorite frame is a wedge top and a groove bottom. So it's just a solid groove all across the bottom and there's no hole where the slotted uh, bottom would be. Uh, it, to me, it's just personal preference. The way I, that's the way I like it. So again, I just start on one corner. I have the hooks facing me and I've got the solid portion of the frame toward my back or toward the frame's back. Again, I just simply work both hands on both sides of the um, foundation and I'm just pushing down and in, down and in. Again, so I started on one end, and the reason I did that is I generally started off my foundation toward one end of the frame, and it allows me to push as I go, um, and it just works its way in. And once I get it in, once you saw how quickly that it went in, I just simply center it back left and right, and now I simply take my hands and I push it. Once it's centered where I want it to be, and it's not really that critical because the bees are going to fill it in anyway, I simply take my hand and I push it again. If you don't center it before you push it in, those hooks are not quite at 90 degree. They're actually angled up just a little bit, and they're going to catch on that top bar. So you want to center it as much as you can first. And again, what I'm doing is I'm pushing it against the back of that rabbit where that wedge came out. And now it's setting nice and easy. Again, if I try to lift, push it left and right, it's not going to go easily. So the next thing I want to do is I want to turn it upside down. And when I remove my wedge from my frame, again using um, a utility knife or razor blade, I take my 5 8 inch nails and I put them at an angle so that way whenever I get ready to put my wedge in, it makes it much easier. So sometimes when you um, take these wedges off the high top, excuse me, the, the frame top, you'll see that it's kind of giving me a hard time as I push it in, it wants to bow. So a simple solution for that is to use a pair of diagonal cutters. Cutters, I talked about the uh, frame causing this to bow. When I cut this off my frame, it was a tight fit putting it back together. So I'm going to simply use my diagonal wire cutters and I'm going to go on one end of this wedge and cut off about a sixteenth of an inch. And using the diagonal wire cutters is the easiest way that I've found to do it. I've used a the saw, there's no need to it. You saw it's just a clip or two and that cut that off. So now whenever I get ready to align it, again I'm aligning it where my nails are angled out, the five eighths inch nails, I can simply place them on top of the um, hooks on the um, foundation. I'm going to simply place pressure against the uh, foundation and the wedge. And if I didn't have wired foundation, it's the same concept. I'm just going to pinch as tightly as I can with my finger and my thumb. I'm going to push it against the foundation. And I'm going to take this Pittsburgh 7 ounce tack hammer. It's my favorite hammer simply because it has a longer head on it. If you buy tack hammers, most of the time they're only about 3 quarters of an inch Long, uh, three quarters of the size of this in length so you get in closer um, with this hammer without having to worry about hitting the foundation much. If you have the smaller head you can actually go in and hit the foundation easier. It's not a big deal either way because the bees are going to fix your damage anyway. But again I try not to damage any foundation any more than I need to so it doesn't create as much work on the bees. So again I'm just going to pinch that wedge against the foundation against that back wall of the uh, frame top. And again, I'm pushing down and then I'm simply tacking it. When I put the tacks in to the wedge, I put them about an inch to two inches away from the end of the wedge so that I wouldn't have to um, worry about hitting the end bars. So then I just come down to the opposite end and I pinch as hard as I can again, keep my nail fingers out of my way, give it a tack in, and then I go into the center 
and then I just push in as best as I can. Again, because now I don't have as long fingers. I just push it in as big as I can. And I get it started. Once I get it in, I tack it in. And the beauty of having those nails at an angle, it also helps push in uh, that wedge just a little bit more. So now I've got it uh, somewhat secured. I could actually probably just leave it as is now, but now I have this wire staying a little bit proud of the uh, foundation. So I'm going to remedy that by taking one of these form boards and my spur embedders. And again, I like the spur embedders with the smaller holes. Uh, and because I'm using metal wire instead of fishing line, uh, like I use for fishing line for my uh, brood chambers, I'm going to embed this wire as much as I can. Um, and it, in order to uh, get this foundation from to release from this form board, uh, I can simply coat this form board with a little bit of mineral oil placed on a uh, um, paper towel and just kind of rub it on it and that'll help release it uh, a little easier. And I'd done that earlier, so uh, not a big deal. All right, so then again, I take this form board and I put my frame in it um, and then I make sure that the horizontal wire is not sitting over top of one of the holes. You'll see that uh, there's usually about four holes on one that you buy from a store. I made this and I just cut out the smaller, the, the shallow frame hole because uh, again, most people don't wire the shallow frames. So again, um, and when you notice, when you get this from the store, you're going to notice that one of these grooves is deeper than the others. And the reason for that is because this uh, top bar on the frame is a little deeper. So you put that in the deeper hole so you get a nice flat surface. So from there I center it on my frame board and then from there I take my spur embedder, find my wire, make sure I'm not over top of a groove uh, of a, one of those uh, slots in the um, form board. And I just simply slowly go along the top of the metal wire and it goes literally just just this quick. Alright and if you're foundation is somewhat warm, uh, you'll notice it actually sticks like glue. Um, if you try to do it when the foundation is cold, it's really brittle and you can actually break it. Uh, if you tried to, I'm going to flip this frame around now so that this other horizontal wire is now exposed. If I tried to use one of the sperm embedders that they try to sell you in the stores, it doesn't have a little groove in it. It's smaller, uh, Spur better has a small groove in the center of it, uh, which makes it easier to ride along top of the uh, metal wire. Whereas if you use this traditional spur better, there is no groove. So you're going to see it tends to walk and I'll attempt to use it here. But you have to really, really concentrate as you're doing it. It can be done as you're seeing me do it, but I just walked off of it. Uh, so again, without that small groove, it makes it harder to do this. And then when you get to the end, there's not as, it's not as small, so you can't go into the corner as easily as this small one that has that groove in the top. Again, it's much easier, and I'm just using my finger down toward the bottom, just kind of apply a little bit of control to it to keep it from drifting off. Now, the disadvantage to using this smaller embedder is that because it is so close to the... Um, containment part of the head, you tend to get a little bit of wax in that hole, but that's not a big deal. I can just simply take uh, a small piece of wire and poke it through the hole, or I can simply rotate the, the head itself a little bit, and it eventually clears most of that wax out where it rolls a little smoother. And that is how you embed wire on a Honey Super, um, and how to install foundation. Now, if I, just to prove the point that you can use unwired foundation, which is what I have here. There's no vertical wires. You can still use it with wired, uh, cross-wired frames. You just don't have the hooks at the top or the vertical wires to support. Now I do know beekeepers, old beekeepers, that don't use uh, cross wires at all and they just simply use the wired foundation with hooks and they said that, that when they run it through their honey supers that that gives them enough support. Um, again, it's your choice. Um, 
ironically, I'm a beekeeper, doesn't do a lot of honey, so uh, I still do it anyway, just as a, as a habit. And the only time I generally extract honey is whenever, uh, when I'm teaching somebody and they want to learn how. So again, just like the uh, medium super, I'm going to go, this one has now, because it's a deep, has four, I'm going to go behind the first one, in front of it, the next one, behind it, and in front of the other one. Uh, again, and again, I've paid attention to where the um, wedge top is. Again, it's not as critical on this one simply because I don't have the wire hooks. So I come behind it and I'll go in front of the next one. Again, I'm just using my fingers and just kind of working it, make sure it goes across. So again, if you have to, you can kind of move your fingers around. Uh, just kind of move it in front of the wire or behind the wire, depending on your perspective. And then once I get it down toward the bottom, I'm going to slide the foundation over to one side a little bit. And then I'm going to start just like I did with the medium. I'm going to start in one corner and use my fingers kind of like I'm praying a little bit going down. Um, I just put one corner in that groove of the bottom uh, portion of the frame. And sometimes I like to take my fingers and kind of pinch it and just kind of get it started. And again, I just work it, slowly work it. And as I'm doing it, I'm kind of pulling it down, pulling it down as I go, but not applying a whole lot of pressure. Uh, again, with its unwired foundation, it's not that big a deal. Uh, when you're using the wired foundation, those, those wire hooks tend to get hung up a little bit more. All right, so I'm sticking it in, sticking it in. All right, so now it's in. And when you put your foundation in, uh, it's important that you get um, as much of it underneath this lip of this uh, top as much as you can. And again, I'm just going to simply push it in once I've got it centered. The foundation centered. In this case, when I put it in there, it's centered. Now, again, you probably can't see it from there, um, but what I have is I have foundation that's a little bit too long for the frame. So a simple solution to that, if you encounter that, is to simply pop it out. And again, that's the beauty of having foundation that's not wired. I simply put it on a solid surface and I'll get a uh, metal uh, ruler and I'll show you how we trim that. So I simply take, in this case, again, because not all foundation manufacturers make it the same, um, and some things even within the same manufacturer is not the same. So in this case, my foundation was a little bit too long, so I'm going to remedy that. So um, when I put it in, it created a lot of bows. Well, what happens is, is when you do that, one, it makes it harder to seat the wire, and two, if you get bows, when the bees draw the comb, it's going to make that same pattern, and sometimes you'll have some comb that's not quite as deep as the others. Uh, some of the cells. So to remedy that, I'm going to simply get a um, razor blade. I'm going to take my metal um, yardstick. I'm going to place it on top of the foundation. I'm generally going to trim off uh, probably about a sixteenth or an eighth of an inch, probably about an eighth of an inch in this case. And I'm going to be very careful where my hand placement is so I'm not slicing my hand. In this case, I put my fingers out, just give it a little support, and then I simply run my razor blade against the ruler and draw it all the way across and now I've got a piece of wax. Again, you could save this because you can remelt this um, and I throw it in a, bu a scrap bucket at the house and then you can melt it and use it for other projects or in case uh, if you have a foundation press uh, you can make your own uh, wax foundation again. So in this case I trimmed off what I need to and we'll go at it again. So it's a good thing that happens. Now you see what to do in case that happens to you. So in this case, again, I see where the rabbit is on that. I go, again, behind the first wire so it's easier. I bypass it, and then I just work my way down through, work my way down through, and now I'm back down. And again, I just start with one corner, kind of push everything back to one edge, put this corner in. That's what I like about beekeeping. No, uh, two, I don't, no, no two events are the same, so you see that's you know, I had a problem. It's a quick fix of how to solve it. So I've got it set it in there now. So again, before you probably couldn't see it, but there was a significant bow to where I wasn't going to let that happen. Uh, so now I've got it set down in here, and now I'll simply center it and place it in there. And then I will take, I'll go off camera for a second. Again, I've got my preformed uh, wedges. Again, in the wintertime, it's a good product. I'll, uh, I'll make uh, a series of wedges at one time. I'll uh, disassemble them from the uh, 
frame and I'll put the nails in and they'll sit in a box. Uh, if I need them on the spur of the moment like this, they're easy done. So again, what I like to do is I simply take my diagonal pliers and cut about 16th or an eighth inch off. I'm going to put it upside down, put the nails where they're ang angling out, and it sets in there nicely. So from there, I go in, pinch it, take my Pittsburgh tack hammer, pinch, 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 and especially important to pinch uh, against foundation that doesn't have the hooks to give yourself a little bit more pressure against it, because what's holding that in there, if you, especially if you have unwired horizontal wires, it can easily fall out. So again, I've got this foundation pressed as far down against the uh, top of the frame as I can, and then I'm pinching as hard as I can against the wedge, against the back of the uh, high top, or frame, excuse me, frame top. Same thing here. Um, I'm going to simply push against it as best as I can, but I, my fingers aren't as long now. So again, I'm just pushing down and in as best as I can. And I've got all three of those in now. So again, same thing with my form board. I simply take it, I'm going to speed it up a little bit, just show you how I normal, my normal speed. Again, I just take this smaller one because it has a groove on it. This spur and better, put it on top of the wire. Put the second one down just a little closer to it. Uh, my frames, because I'm not using my normal table, it's trying to slide around on me. Again, because this now has four uh, horizontal wires, I just simply go across, go across, go across, go across, make, keep my eyes focused on the head of this to where it's running. All right, so I go back over, and I go back over and get the other two. All right, come on. And this is just that simple, just that easy. Again, my foundation is warm, so it's acting like glue. And you heard it, I don't know if you heard it from there, it's uh, my um, mineral oil. I must not have done as, as much on it. It must not have absorbed as much as I thought. It didn't release quite as well, but again, it didn't pull up away from the frame. And that is how you insert foundation and how you uh, embed this uh, horizontal metal wires into foundation. So. Thanks for watching, and I'll have more videos coming. Thank you very much.